Well, hey there, lovely people. Here's a very quick summary in regards to latency on the Quad Cortex. So number one, no, the Quad Cortex doesn't have any latency monitoring options like a display, but due to the fact that we have full delay compensation on all lanes, we can measure the latency directly on the lane. You go in USB 5 to USB 5.6, we can ping that, and the basic latency is 84 samples that's the dsp latency measured over usb if i do the same measurement through the converters i end up with 89 samples so using my calculator just to prove it 89 samples divided by 48 kilohertz sample rate it's 1.854 so 1.85 milliseconds of latency for an empty patch now let's go to the test patch i have here As you can see, we have a compressor, we have an overdrive, we have a flanger. Then we have two amps, an impulse response, and a tape delay, and a spring reverb. And that measures now 196 samples. And 196 samples, plus five samples for the ADDA, equals to 4.1875 milliseconds of latency. That is below five milliseconds. Apparently there is no human being that can sense a latency that's less than five milliseconds. If we go towards 15 milliseconds, which is like another one of those like milestone points, at about 12, I hear something. So uh, take care. And the problem is that due to the fact that uh, the quad cortex and lengthens the so-called block window, which is the samples, block samples in time that it takes to process the signal coming in, uh, it lengthens those block windows by whatever is required. Um, we should really take heed in choosing the right um, modules on the DSP lanes for our patches. So far, so good with that patch. We're under five milliseconds and that's cool. But if I change the IR loader from the light version to the normal version, which has an additional, like little bit of reverb functionality built in, look at how the latency jumps. We're now jumping up to 260. So that's 265. We're over five milliseconds and we don't like that. It gets even weirder now. Probably it's because we have two uh, reverb calculations going on. One here on the room mix and one here on the spring reverb. I will just bypass that one so you can hear the room mix. Definitely there. And the fun thing is if I completely remove the reverb, because right now we're still at 260, if I completely remove the reverb module, we're down to 196 again. That's one of the things we could do. The other strange things that are happening, and just take a look, we're still at 260 samples. As you can see, I'm using the bus compressor sustainer here. If I bypass that one, it's very funny. We have 16 samples less because I think that one has a look ahead because the original analog unit is um, acting very, very fast on, on the incoming signal. So probably we have a, a DSP look ahead with the CS3 enabled. We're on 260 with the CS3 disabled. We're on 244. If I completely remove it, we're back to 180. So now we already have a patch that's so complex that the quad cortex core one in this case cannot handle everything in real time. Let's undo this. And it's very funny because it really depends on what compressor we're using as well. Let's, let's keep it switched on. So we're at 260. If I'm using the legendary 87, we're again at 180. So if you want to use the patch as is, but you want to have lower latency, lower than five milliseconds, you can be selective about the modules you plant there. But let's say we want to have the CS3, so there's no other option than doing the following. And that's one of the things I found out. 
We can utilize lane three and lane four like an external effects processor. And as you can see, I'm going multi out here. So uh, the signal is going to output one, output two, output three, and output four. And I connected output three to input two. And I'm gonna pull those two effects onto lane three. I'm gonna choose input two. And then for output, I just have to be sure that I don't use output three. So output one, two, or four. One of those will work. The other one will probably create digital feedback. I'm going to go 100% on the mix, all wet for the delay, um, else we'll get a little bit of phasing in the signal. Let's have a listen to that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn my FRFR a bit up. That's cool, but we have a lot of effects now. I'm going to use a utility. I'm going to use the volume block, and I'm going to pull it down a bit. So now we have all the effects here. Uh, let's take a look. If I'm only sending that signal up there to output 3, that's just the effect. but we're going multi out for that one. And why am I going multi out? Why am I doing that? Well, number one, I want to live on the edge. And number two, I want to have all of my effect module slots available because normally I use them, right? Uh, but let's ping the whole thing again. But we're at 196 like before, but not on 260, which is amazing. Right, so 196 again, 196 samples plus five for the difference between the USB connection and the actual analog I/O, and uh, divided by 48, we're on 4.1875 milliseconds, and that's pretty cool. By the way, using it that way also works perfectly for um, any harmonizer stuff. So I'm putting all the effects here, and I have my usual setup on. The first core, let's ping this setup, that's 180 samples, so it's 185, so that's just 3.85 milliseconds, and I'm getting a full harmonizer. Thank you very much and don't forget to have the best day ever. Bye.